Welcome back. You're still watching The Globe. Let's go back to our top story now where uh, the Zimbabwe second vice president, Kembo Mahadi, has uh, resigned uh, from office uh, amid allegations of sexual misconduct. Allegations which he continues to deny and he says that he's doing this uh, so that he can find a way to clear his name. Well, our correspondent in the country is the Effort Musekiwa. He's in Harare, and he joins us now from that capital city. Uh, Effort, uh, some people might say this has come as a surprise because uh, the former vice president actually had a presser and looked like he wasn't going anywhere. Yes, indeed, Peter. It is actually coming as a surprise. A lot of people had actually written off the vice president uh, or the former vice president resigning. But surprise, surprise, today, late in the afternoon, uh, an announcement was issued. He issued the announcement himself that he was stepping down. Unprecedented. It, it rarely happens within ZANU-PF. A lot of uh, high-ranking officials have been accused of uh, you know, uh, similar matters, but they've never gone to the extent of actually resigning. I actually don't recall anyone in history who has actually resigned. A lot of them are actually either retired or are forced to leave office, but never voluntarily. All right. So, you know, people might then start to say, uh, is there some political motivation behind this? Well, in his retirement uh, statement, he did indicate that there is some political um, um, uh, you know, force behind it. There is some politics at play uh, which led him to resign. He did not go to further to elaborate what kind of political pressure, but really it, it indicates that there is a lot of pressure also politically that's coming to, that was coming to the vice president. You recall that um, this post that he shared or the post that he has with uh, the other vice president, uh, Chiwenga, it's one of those contested seats where you know, you are very close to the highest office and you are very strategically positioned if you are there. So there's a lot of jostling that happens around and, you know, people always try to make sure that they get to this office. So I'm sure he, 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 he had a few enemies that wanted to, to see his demise. Mm. Um, just remind our viewers how he explained these allegations at uh, a recently held uh, press conference. Well, uh, the, the one that he held about a week ago, he indicated that he is actually a victim of voice cloning. He, he said he is a victim of uh, 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 invasion of privacy, saying that it was not him. He actually denied that it was him who, who was on the, on, the, on, the, uh, on the recordings. But surprisingly today, he then said he had to uh, make this decision in order to save um, you know, the the office of, the, mm. of the, pre the president. So really, initially he had actually totally denied saying that it wasn't him, it was an issue of voice cloning, someone was, uh, uh, had cloned his voice, someone had actually inva uh, invaded his privacy, um, and he was going to take the matters to the court and try to get redress from, from, the, from that uh, angle. But surprisingly today, he didn't seem to mm. say that. In as much as he tried not to uh, admit it openly, he still maintains this deniability to say that he is still a victim. He's actually um, putting himself in the in the shoes of a victim, not the perpetrator. Have the women who have been uh, pointed to in the middle of these allegations have they said anything? Have they denied any connection to Mr. Mohadi? Well, the attacks were mainly targeted at um, uh, at the former vice president and the women who are uh, you know who are involved or who are say, who are alleged to be involved with the uh, former vice president. None of them has come uh, out in the open. The only one that w w that came out was a clarification where one woman was misquoted. They had misquoted the, the the name of one woman. Uh, I think it's Charlene. I'm, I'm sorry, I, I don't recall the surname, but that she actually came out and said, it's not me. And, you know, the, um, um, it, it was then further confirmed that it, it indeed was not her. It was another person who shared a similar name with her, but not the one that had been or whose pictures had been published. So the women really have not been, uh, we have not heard a lot from the women involved. We, we are still waiting to see. We're actually waiting. I think the attacks were mainly targeted at the vice president more than the women that are are uh, involved in the, with him. Has President Mnangagwa said anything about this issue, even 
since it began? Well, President Mnangagwa did not say anything. Um, but what we got or sentiments that we got were actually from the Vice President. Remember last week when he issued uh, a statement, he said he, he had received support from uh, President uh, Mnangagwa. But uh, the, you know what, uh, Peter, he, unlike maybe South Africa, in Zimbabwe, you will not get uh, the president commenting about these issues. Mm. But guess what? Tomorrow there is a ZANU PF Politburo meeting that is going to take place. Uh, whether Mnangango will make a comment, will uh, say something, uh, we wait to find out tomorrow when the ZANU PF uh, uh, Politburo uh, meets and deliberates. Then we get a statement. Normally, the president does issue a statement. So we might get him to speak tomorrow, but uh, as of now, he hasn't said anything. If social media is anything to go by, one gets a sense that the public weren't buying his story at all and that they believed that the man on the voice tape was him. Um, what have they been saying? What kind of chat has been coming through since the resignation news came through? Well, uh, Peter, uh, let me just say that these allegations of uh, sexual misconduct against um, the, the former vice president are not really new. Um, they go way back even during the era of um, uh, former president or the late president, Robert Mugabe, where he was, uh, Kimbo Mwadi was still a minister. There were reports that he actually had altercations with his then wife over his sexual um, um, misconduct, over his sexual life. Um, so people actually knew the history, his history, his uh, detailed history of him, uh, you know, being involved in such matters. So that's when it emanates. Right now, a lot of people are just saying they're actually taking the element of it being a theft where you find mm. um, a senior official resigning. It never happens. People had actually given up last week when he denied the allegation. They said, it's over. It's the same same ball game. But now it's a different thing that he has finally actually announced his resignation. And of course, there's always been mutterings that uh, he's not the only one and that perhaps uh, others may follow. We'll have to wait and see, I guess. Well, uh, the, the joke or the thing is that uh, he was also one of the senior bachelors. <laughs> Remember, both our vice presidents are said to be senior bachelors. And that, uh, you know, fires the speculation of them being involved in these um, not so... Uh, glorious activities. Glorious, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so we might get, and we do have quite a number of uh, senior min, uh, ministers who, we, we do hear rumors of them also being involved in such uh, um, uh, activities. So we really don't know, unless someone really, or unless, um, you know, they are caught red-handed, uh, most of them will just deny it mm. the as if it doesn't, uh, they do not uh, partake in such activities. All right, effort. We're going to leave it there. Thanks very much indeed for joining us. That's our correspondent in Harare, Effort Msekua, giving us an update on the deputy, second deputy vice president, Kembo Muhadi, has resigned, denies allegations of sexual misconduct, saying that he's a victim of political chicanery.